we are going to have a good conversation Absolutely. today. Good morning, hello and welcome to the Ladies Club. Thank you for joining us as we bring you another exciting episode of the leading women's sports talk show in Mzanzi. My name is Bailin Kirti. Madume kala pengrele amole na na ularna le rata hangle kiti kama fuma hadi aruna a Africa bora eling the Ladies Club. Na kina le bomo swedi and you've been following us over the past few weeks. You'll know that we are all about profiling women who are champions in the beautiful yet challenging world of sports. And you're welcome to join the conversation of course on Twitter, Fumana ko Twitter berekisang at spot at SABC le at SABC happened berekisang hashtag aruna eling the Ladies Club. We'll also be on Facebook using the same um, uh, what is is it at sport at SABC? You can use that as well on Facebook. Just remember the hashtag. That's the big important one. Yes. Hashtag the, the ladies, ladies club. club. Today we continue to celebrate and get to know more about women who have shifted perceptions in sport and continue to make their talents and voices known in this male-dominated field. Field, please do feel free to air your views on what you may take from today's uh, program because whenever there's conversation, mm. new ideas spring forth. Absolutely, and Valen, as we usually do with the show, we start with a very important quote. Kajona Ribuaka quote Ena Erling Yona Ere Women belong in all places where decisions are being made. It shouldn't be that women are the exception. This is a quote by Ruth Kingsburg. Ruth Bader Kingsburg is an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. States. She was also appointed by President Bill Clinton and took to oath in the office back in 1993. She's also a big fan of South Africa's constitution. Well, I think the whole world is, hey, they, they, Absolutely. they look up to what South Africa has managed to put into their constitution. But what I really love about what she says, yeah. Gable, is uh, something that I see with our game changer yes. too, because uh, she works in a male-dominated uh, sphere. Absolutely. But, you know, they the people that are in those spaces make it normal and they create a new normal yes. for each and every which single one great. of us. Which Absolutely. is great, which is great, which is great because then we have um, some footprints to work with, you know, they, they make it look like, okay, it's doable, it's possible in a male-dominated industry. Absolutely love it. Today's Game Changer, um, who Lebo and I got uh, got the inside scoop with, we started talking to her already, she's a former Wits University, uh, uh, University player, studied law at Wits, mm -hmm. uh, tw she also worked as the 2010 FIFA World Cup media manager at the FNB Stadium. Her name Sh is none other than Tandi Morafe. In 2011, she also was the only South African to work mm. as the uh, media, media officer, officer. Wow. at the Women's World Cup in Germany. Wow, that is absolutely incre incredible. I mean, she's done so many things. I mean, having been to the under-19 FIFA Women's World Cup in Azerbaijan, she can only really lead us forward from here. She's one of the biggest women who's had her highlights when she was part of the 2008 PSL delegation to the Euro 2008. Now, this one is big because the findings they got they put together, they um, shaped the PSL into one of the top three football leagues in the world. We still are made in one of the best on the continent. Once again, it's women being in those decision-making positions. Where there are decisions to be made, women need to be found. You've seen her, she's sitting right here. We're going to be chatting to her in just a short while. Tony, say hello to our viewers. Hey, everyone. Hello, hello. Ah. <laughs> Well, we're definitely going to take a quick break then, shall we? And then when we come back at Tandi, we'll be chatting all things about her career challenges. Looking forward to that conversation. Hashtag The Ladies Club. Tell you a little bit more about our game changer today because we gave you a little taste. She's smart, she's sassy, and fierce. She's the media officer at Orlando Pirates, Tandi Marafe. Tandi is living her dream working for one of the country's biggest football clubs, and I would say one of the continent's absolutely, biggest football clubs. Absolutely. She had the privilege of working with the international football governing body of FIFA and held so many roles. Level. Absolutely, Tandi Marafe. Welcome officially to the Ladies Club. It's so good to have you in studio yeah I man i thank you um i'm honored and privileged uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, hashtag ladies club yeah um yeah uh, so yeah it's uh, you know it's just an honor like i said and i'm grateful to be here so tandy you started with law and then kind of you got 
a break in sport and you were introduced to sport in a really big different way at university but did you always come from a sport loving background mm -hmm. uh, yeah actually some of my fondest memories as a kid uh, was sitting with my mother and watching Wimbledon with her we'd always wow. watch uh, Roland Garros Wimbledon yeah. Um, and, and my brother as well, um, he got me interested in football, so we'd watch uh, soccer. And when I started, you know, we, I, f I supported the same teams he did, yeah. but eventually when I uh, figured out wh where my loyalties lie, <laughs> <Which is laughs> <what? you know? laughs> yeah. Oddly enough, he's a Kaiser Chiefs fan, a yeah. huge Kaiser Chiefs fan. I'm an Orlando <laughs> Pirates supporter, and we sort of have this uh, family rivalry that we have. I mean, you know, sure. we love each other to bits, but um, we support different teams all around the world. And, you know, because of him and, and the interests uh, that just we had in sports as a family, um, I follow football in uh, La Liga. Yes. I know um, I'm a Real Madrid fan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in Serie A and uh, in Barclays Real Premier Man, League, yeah. uh, Bundesliga, you know, so all these major um, uh, um, uh, football f uh, f uh, football uh, ac across the world basically you know but mostly in europe obviously uh, we tried uh, we we tried following in the us as well but uh, we lost interest really? <laughs> <laughs> but we tried we tried so it's guys... how ambitious we were but like uh, uh, and my my mother got uh, you know got dressed her soul she um, she was she was an avid uh, sports supporter. Wow. She followed uh, sports, like I said, tennis, um, uh, cricket, rugby. Uh, my mother was watching all of those wow. when it wasn't even popular, and she got me into following those sports. I remember when uh, South Africa got readmitted uh, into the international scene, and um, we were in the World Cup, and and Brian McMillan had to hit 20 off one ball. Yeah. You know, and I was trying to figure out what the what, what's this that loot system? <laughs> why why are we ro are we being robbed and stuff like yeah. that but like you know I've always had a, a passion for sports and I've always loved sports and I've always been active uh, at school um, uh, with uh whether it was athletics, uh, touch rugby, uh, cricket, volleyball, you know, mm -hmm. I was, uh, and football, obviously, I was always very active and um, I'm just grateful for the for my mother and instilling that in me as well as my brother. Sure, I can't imagine your home come the derby, um, <laughs> who, who, what then happens, but let's talk about your love for, for sport. Uh, you yeah. are telling us about it, but you also played football. Um, yeah. You went to represent South Africa at the World Student Games. That transition versus law now into behind the scenes of being a media office officer how did it happen um it it, it was just one of those where um i i've always played uh, yeah. with with my siblings uh, with my brothers and and when i got to vets um you know we didn't have enough funds um uh, for me to continue my studies and my uh, my mother was a single parent raised all of us uh, and did very well you know she's one of my heroes um, and I, I just you know I, I got invited to watch a game mm -hmm. and they were shorter player Wow. And, and just like that yeah and someone was like uh, actually the coach just asked you know randomly can anyone play and I'm like do we need soccer boots? Because I didn't have. I just yeah. had a pair of sneakers. Like, no, nah, it's fine. Come, you know. So I was supposed to just uh, play for five, ten minutes, and then until the actual person, the actual player, was running late, came through, and I ended up playing the whole game. And at the end of the game, I was um, invited to to be part of the team, oh, and that's, that's how incredible. I played. And I ended up getting my uh, vets colors, um, uh, and, sure. and 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 and. Uh, through uh, through through sp I had a sports bursary yeah. basically uh, through playing football and it wow. helped with my tuition fees. Shoot, yeah. blessings, eh? My word. And do you feel that uh, your whole career has kind of been, it's it's been a little bit divinely directed yeah. that you've mm. gotten these opportunities, you just managed to to make the most of it because you came from a, a sports loving mm. home. Yeah, uh, of course, of course. Like uh, I've, um, I'm very religious, um, and and I have to thank God because there has to be divine intervention. Yeah. Uh, some of the things just happen, you know, and uh, it, sometimes it's timing. It's all about being at the right place at the right time. But mm. for those opportunities to come my way, they could have easily have gone to someone else. And in India, yeah, you know, you uh, you go 
to varsity doing one thing, but you actually passionate about sports. And mm -hmm. to be quite honest, when I went there, um, it was one of those where I know I need to secure my future and be yeah. qualified in something. Yeah. And, and, and when I got there, I really did understand and I appreciated uh, the course that I was doing. And it was beautiful. It was fun. It was enlightening. And like, you know, completely new world was opened up for me. But there was always that passion. And for me to be able to continue um, uh, studying and, and, and have football be the vehicle for me to do that was, was a huge blessing. And, and um, I'm just grateful for the opportunities. And how did that way <laughs> pave out? How did you go from law, as much as we see your, your, your love for sport, mm -hmm. into a media officer role? Where did that and how did it happen? Um, it's... Um, it's it's it, it it's the chairman's uh, foresight. Chairman is um, is is a very, um, you know, uh, I, I struggle to find the words of how to describe him because of the role and the impact he's had on my mm. life. Um, I I would I could say I'm grateful till the cows come home, but you know it's the honest truth. I am sure. grateful for the for for the opportunities he's given me. But what most people don't know is that. Um, and like literally that man plugged me from obscur from obscurity, he gave me an opportunity where he said he was sending um, his team yeah. uh, to to England to uh, go and just do um, try and, and find out how those teams are ran um, sure. and sort of sort of it was sort of an expedition into how the Premier League is, is ran and we went to Chelsea, we went to Liverpool. <laughs> went to quite a few teams just to understand the structures, how everything is done. And obviously, some of the, uh, am amongst all of the subjects that were covered or um, 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 media uh, came up and it played a huge role in terms of how they market their brands, how they make sure their brands stay relevant and it's out there and people see. I mean, you know, there's a huge following of, uh, of uh, Butler's Premier League here mm -hmm. in, in, in yeah. South Africa. and. And there were just, you know, there was a lot, there was a lot more. And it, again, it just opened up another, um, a, another level in terms of what, what football is about. And so we went there and I thought, wow, um, I get to go overseas. It was in winter, got to see snow for the first time. When we came back, um, uh, we had to do a report on, on um, our experience there and what we've learned and 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 so um, that was my breakthrough and uh, as a, a couple of months down the line he called me uh, in for an interview and that's how um, I started at Holland Pirates I was a, a supporters coordinator then and when when um, <clears throat> the the new uh, compliance manual from the league came out with the media officer role they needed someone to fill that role and it was given to me and the rest is history. What an incredible story, journey. And what an adventure being at Orlando Pirates because over the decade that Tandy has been there, so, so much has happened. We're going to continue sure. this conversation right here on The Ladies Club. Remember our hashtag, so easy on social media, on Twitter as well as on Facebook, hashtag The Ladies Club. Welcome back. Our trailblazer today, who is a leading face in football communications and is currently the head of stakeholder relations as well as communications at the PSL. We're talking about Connie Muchumi. Connie is blazing the trail at the Premier Soccer League, opening the doors a little wider for more women to actually enter the fray. She's a giant in the corporate mm. sector. Connie was once the Group Business Development Director for the Kelly Group, a director at Business Leadership South Africa, and also advised the Nelson Mandela Foundation on their communication strategy. And just as uh, uh, Tandy was telling us, yeah. Tandy, our game changer today, about those key people yes. in your path, we all need them, whether we get to meet That's them, whether true. they have a direct influence true. on us, or whether they just act as a motivating role for us. True. So, Tandi, do you have somebody like that? Maybe like a person that motivated you more than anyone else? The one person who's shaped my life, 
who, um, uh, who's, who's my heroine, is my mother. Um, there are a lot of people who've helped me along the way. I believe that, you know, in life, God sends you people yeah. um, to angels, as it were. Angels mm -hmm. are people next to you who will help you get to get on your path or get to the next, um, uh, the next part of your journey. Uh, but my mother, being a single woman, raised seven kids on her sure. own. And she made sure that we were disciplined. We went to school. She emphasized the importance of school to us. She emphasized the importance of hard work. Um, and she, she raised um, a family that was united even now. Um, she's, she passed a long time ago, but my brothers and sisters, we are very tight. Uh, we have a very strong family unit. Um, we have very strong uh, family values. And, and you know, when she, she was a, a, a nurse, by the way, um, so she used to work night duty. Mm -hmm. and, and at some point I didn't understand. I was a bit angry in my teenage years. I'm like, no, why is she leaving us at night? Why, yeah. why are we up? You know, she's, mm -hmm. she's not there. And, uh, but only later in life I understood the sacrifices she made for us. I understood for her to work night duty for all of those years, how much, how, uh, how strenuous it was on her, on her body, and how much time she, she sacrificed not being there. And, and, and that just made me appreciate and love her more. And I'll always be grateful for the role she played mm -hmm. in my life because she, um, the, the values that she taught me have made me the person that I am. Wow. And I hope, I only hope and pray that I can pass that on to my son and, and uh, to, um, to my nieces and nephews, you know, because, yeah. Your mom has left quite an incredible legacy for you to follow suit. And what kind of legacy would you now want to leave for other young girls that look at you, look at what you do and look at the work you do and want to aspire to be where you are? What legacy would you like to leave behind for them? Um, I think um, the most important thing for me, it would be that, you know, the ladies out there, um, all the young girls who aspire to go into any industry for that matter, not just football, mm. but in any industry that you, wanna, you, you, you aspire to go into, trust in your ability, trust in yourself as a person, have confidence in who you are uh, and in what you do. Don't second guess yourself. I know sometimes, you know, when you when you're unfamiliar, when you're still new and figuring stuff out and when you're still learning, you know, there are moments of doubts. But if you believe that um, I'm here because I belong, I'm here because yes. I, I am just as good as anyone else around me and I have a right to be here, then you'll be fine. And, and you know, people all often ask, um, how, do you, how, how do you make it in a male-dominated industry? For me, Football is not a male-dominated industry. For me, football is a sport that I'm passionate about, that I love, that I grew up playing, that I'm so familiar with. I understand the, ru the rules. I understand what it means for a player to be in there playing, mm. to, wake you, uh, to run your socks off, to, to leave your heart and, and soul on the field, to win and lose. You know? So uh, maybe that just makes it that more easier for me to connect with the players, to connect with the coaches, because... I understand the 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 sports holi the sport holistically, and also um, it makes it easy for me to co uh, to connect with the supporters mm. because I understand the passion they have for the team and what it means when we win and what it means when we lose as well. Um, so I think what's key in life is finding something that you're passionate about, something that you love, because passion will 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 help you go the extra mile. Passion will push you when your energy levels are down. Passion will push you when you doubt yourself and you're like, God, do I really need mm. the stress? Do I, should I be here? Mm. Should, should I be elsewhere? You have seen <coughs> the best and you have seen the, the worst. worst. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I know that that's fair to say. You've yeah. been with yeah. the club right at the forefront through the treble years and mm. then in an anniversary year, to mm. end for the first time in a PSL era outside mm. of the top eight mm. in a massive year for the club. Mm. <laughs> how, did, how did you see through that and how did you deal with that? It, it was tough. Um, I, I mean, the, you know, 
when you when you support a team, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll speak to you from a fan's perspective and get to um, to uh, the employee's perspective. But as a fan, when when you support a team, you know you always have this belief that your team is going to win. Sure. And you will even when you're going through a bad a, a, um, a run of bad results, you you lose two games in a row, but tomorrow you have another match, a third match, or fourth match, or fifth match, or whatever, you still believe that you're going to win. You only realize that, or you only accept at the end of 90 minutes. I mean, you could be, you could be six, six nil down, yeah. you know, at half time. And you still believe. You believe that, no. that you will come yeah, back. Yeah. You believe that yeah. there will be a miracle. <laughs> and that's what it means to be a, 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 a supporter, a passionate supporter. And getting calls from our supporters was very difficult, but we also understood that it was our responsibility, as our, <clears throat> excuse me, it was our responsibility to take the calls, to answer their emails, mm. to respond to the WhatsApps, um, to speak to them, you know, to give them an, an outlet. Um, you know, so that they can feel that we care about their opinions and we value their opinions and we understand what they're going through. From a media perspective, um, having to field questions around around the, the the bad performance, having to field questions around the 80th anniversary, and you know, we get the worst possible run. I'm like it was like Murphy's Law, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but. Uh, <clears throat> we had to be professional about it. We had to come out um, after every each match, regardless of the result, go and do the post-match uh, interviews. interviews. As inexplicable that season was, because mm. we had very talented players. You did. You you know, did. The guys, were t I think it was fatigue. Uh, it was a lot of factors that you, you, can, uh, you can try and think of that were that led, led to, that, to that season and the results that we got. But I have to commend the, my colleagues, um, the chairman for his yeah. leadership, um, the, the technical staff, and the players. Because as bad as we had things, as, as bad as things were, you know, there was that belief that we will try, we will fight and make it into the, in, in, into the, into the top eight. Wow. You couldn't have said it better. We have to unfortunately leave it there. I wish we had plenty more time to chat to you because I think we need to have a Tandy special 2.2. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Nothing, you know, they Part say. Two. That's it. <laughs> absolutely. You know, they say that sport builds character. Yeah. But hearing Tandy speak and the Shh. passion with which she speaks for the club, it's not only just playing sport, but it's about being a fan of sport that yeah. also creates character. Because yeah. you've got to go yeah. with the highs yeah. and the lows of the team. I agree with you. A lot of people watching are also thinking, oh, maybe I'm not as passionate as I thought I was. So if you can <laughs> fill in those boots, I, I don't know. If you think Think you can do it? Do you have enough passion? I'm level number 24. The ladies club. I look forward to being with you again. My name is Belen Kirtley. Thank you so much for being inside the ladies club lounge. Let's do it again every single Wednesday, 11 o'clock to 11:30 on SABC2. Until we meet again, remember that greatness is never given; it's always earned. Goodbye.